Hello guys, welcome to Mark Trim Tanks. It is another week, another cup of coffee as we say here in the channel. Hmm. And guys, do we have a lot to get through this week? God, I have uh, so much stuff to do. I'm, I'm actually trying to lay it out in front of me here so we can manage to get through all of it. I mean, some of the stuff I could probably split into different days as well, but we're going to talk about the tank outside. We have stuff to unpack, I have stuff to organise. I'd also like to try and uh, do the water change that was meant to do last week in, in the video this week. Um, we need to feed all the shrimp as well, so that's uh, an awful lot to get through. And guys, there was something else as well. Some of you in the comments section of my previous videos were asking about um, how much money a YouTuber like myself actually makes, right? So I don't think it is against YouTube Terms of Service for me to come out and just talk about stuff like this, so I'm actually just going to do it. Right, we're going to say it with a cup of coffee. I'll try and make this part fast so it's not going to board the actual pants off of everybody that's not interested in this stuff but it is if, if you're interested in hmm, thinking about becoming a YouTuber I'm going to give you the rough ballpark figures of what I actually earn in a month right so some of this guys remember it's going to be roughly right and I've written it all down here in the, on this little board here and we'll go through it right so let's start start off by saying um, how much I roughly earn. And I've actually, as I said, I've written it down here. So I'm actually going to hold it here and read it as I'm talking about it. Because if I don't do it this way, guys, I'll forget stuff and it won't make sense. So we're going to start off with a screenshot of my earnings for the last month, which will have been 5,520 kroners, which is uh, okay. Right, and then we're going to stick up... Uh, I'm going to break down these earnings into uh, where do they come from because it sounds a lot but then when you see where it comes from it might not seem that much at all in the end and so from advertising revenue I get 4,296 kroners uh, from shorts earnings I earned the whopping 13 kroners so 13 kroners is like uh, how much is that? My God, it's been so long since I did conversions and stuff. 20 kroners is like two pounds, so one pound 30, something like that. It's probably even less, maybe like one pound or something for short earnings. I basically, guys, I stopped making them because in my opinion, they don't belong on my channel. Unless, unless the shrimp are absolutely magnificent, then I don't believe shorts belong on my channel. But we, we'll see, that might change, because the only way I would change that is if I thought the shrimp were... I'm saying this, guys, because I might have something in the works where I'm going to show you really, really high-grade shrimp, and as in short form, right? So the shorts typically don't earn much money, and I've seen some YouTubers say stuff like um, they had 20 million short views on a short and they earned something like $200 on a race. So don't get into YouTube thinking that you can make shorts and make a living from it because you need big numbers like into the hundreds of millions to make a decent income from it which is beyond most people if you're being very honest and so that is from the short from my memberships I earn 1163 kroners which reminds me guys let's pick a side here I always pick the wrong side right let's let's put it here I'm going to put up a little credit screen of my members thank you guys very much for supporting my channel so that was 1163 kroners and our supers, because there's a thing called super on supers on your chat as well. Um, and I earned 47 kroners, which was like four dollars or something. Now, supers are typically something that comes along with um, if you're live streaming, basically, right? You can't do them on a normal video, but most people do supers as a thank you or if they want to pass a message on, on a live stream. So for these earnings, what was it, 5,520 kroners, I will pay roughly about, I want to say maybe about 1,000 kroners, like $100, something like that, to the US government in tax, which leaves me roughly about 4,500 kroners to myself, right, which is roughly £426, or, no, $426, or... £333, right? So, see when you see in different uh, currencies, for me, it's almost four and a half thousand kroners. It, it seems like an awful lot of money, doesn't it? 
But then when you convert it to pounds, it's not so much money after all. It's like it's like a hundred pound less than you think it actually is going to be. So let's break this down on on the amount of work that I put in to make this video, to make these videos for this kind of earning. So I will do. Um, I will roughly make videos for about three hours a week, right? And for me, I think that's long enough. I don't, I'm physically not able to do more than three hours a week. I tried to do it, guys. I tried to do it every day, and it's just a nightmare. I just can't make it work. So three hours a week is what the amount of time that I will spend in here, filming, right, with a camera, talking, showing you stuff in here. That's three hours a week. Doesn't seem that much, does it? Right, and then by the time I edit this three hours down into whatever, like an hour and whatever. I'm doing less and less editing. So, um, all I basically do is I cut out all the, the spaces and mistakes I make in the video. And that is the limitation of my editing, right? It's just better for me again, for time and speed. And uh, guys, I, I really don't enjoy editing that much. So that's why I don't want to do it. So it's three hours a week. And then I said I probably spend uh, probably the same editing a video, three hours in total. And this is not always done in one day. It's the same with the video part when I'm making a video. It's not always done in one day. So for our whole week, that's roughly about six hours. Six hours of work I put into making a YouTube video. It's not even one day of a regular job. So I, I think that's probably um, a decent income for someone that's working the amount of hours that I do for this amount of money. So that's six hours for $426, which I think is great, actually. Right, I'm, I'm, I don't have the capacity to go big, as in build bigger and better tanks and build massive shrimp rooms and be physically able to do it, to make it really worthwhile into like a full, full-time job, because that's the extent that you would have to go to to actually be able to make this work um, because guys let's let's talk about this and be brutal honest the shrimp keeping niche is a very 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 small niche right so advertisers pay less money to us than they would as an example of if you had a successful car channel or a successful camping channel or successful fitness channel they, they pay much higher ad revenue than what we get for our small niche Shrimp keeping is a very, very small, like, sub-niche of aquariums. Right, aquariums themselves is quite a big niche, so that's where this comes from. So my advice to anybody getting into this for money for a shrimp keeping channel, unless you're willing to put in a lot of hours and go big on tanks and all that stuff, you're probably not going to be able to make it as a full-time YouTuber. But guys, we're, we're talking about earnings just from YouTube. Right, that's all I do. I stopped doing a shop and I stopped selling shrimp a long time ago because, again, I'm, I'm physically not able. But if you're able to do that, if you're able to have a shop and you're able to physically sell shrimp, then yeah, you can definitely make this work as part of your little business plan to get your money and your, your earnings and whatever else, make it a little bit of a, a hobby that you enjoy doing kind of thing. All right, so th I thought I would cover that. That's how I earn my money on YouTube. It's not all... Um, gold and silver and whatever else but yeah let's get on to the next stuff I thought I'd answer that at least once I think I've only done this once ever in like eight years on my channel talk about earnings and stuff but I thought I would do it so people that are thinking about getting into this type of line of hobby slash work uh, just, to, just to show you what you actually earn all right let's jump on to the next part all right, shrimp, let's, let's talk about some of the stuff that I got in the post this week because uh, I think we should make that a little bit of a feature. I think I already know what this is. I order stuff and then it comes. But um, let me just show you what this stuff is when, when I order it because I think it's good for you to get an idea of what I buy and, uh, and how it goes into my shrimp room. So I already know what these are. I can tell by the, the package in here. It's a, bit, a little bit soft. I think it is... Let me grab a knife or something. I think it is sponge filters. I'll leave a link, if I remember, in the first comment where you can buy these. I buy these quite regularly now. And when you buy them, they come um, not put together. 
so you have to put them together but they're very very cheap guys so I'm buying six double sponges like this six double sponges with all the parts all the suckers you just put them together right, so this is the same as the other stuff that you buy in shops for $18 which I think is incredibly good right so if, if I was to go into under shop in Norway I would be talking about 200 kroners which is about $18 again for one single sponge filter which is ridiculous so I'll leave a link for these in the comment section below all right let's see what else do we have okay, so I bought some tubing but I'm not so sure about this stuff guys look I'm always trying to buy good things and then I'll share them with you on what they are but yeah I'm not sure about this stuff this, I don't think this was the stuff I wanted let me see yeah this is the PVC type stuff I prefer the silicon tubing over the PVC stuff it's still usable I think this was 20 meters oh, I'm seeing that it is very thick walled I don't know if this will come out on camera it's very very thick walled let me just quickly go, grab a connector and we'll see how hard it is to put into one of our oh, it's quite easy actually to go in it was quite easy the only reason I like silicon better than PVC is because um, I find that PVC discolors over time and it goes a little bit hard silicon doesn't tend to go the same I can't remember what I paid for this but again guys I'll, I'll leave a link in the first comment as well there you go 20 meters and uh, I do have something here that I want to show you but I think we're going to keep this let me just show you right because I have something else here that I want to show you as well alright guys we're going to talk about shrimp food here because you guys all know that I'm always trying to find better and better shrimp foods right and I'm looking at everything when I'm looking for shrimp foods I'm looking in the wild I'm looking in shops everything I'm looking online bought stuff everything so here is one that we're going to try and yeah I don't really see it on anybody's channel talking about this particular thing and it is a plant right and this is watercress right from what I read about watercress it is one of the most highly densest densest not densest 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 nutrient plants in the world right and and uh, people typically will, will eat watercress as a salad right from what I remember growing as a child because I, I remember my grandparents house they used to grow watercress um, it was very easy to grow and you could eat it off the plant like a sal it's a salad plant and so I don't think there's any of this oxalatic acid that you get with other vegetables in this I don't think it's in this and the other bonus with this guys is as the name suggests it's watercress I think you can actually initially start this plant off in a little bit of soil and then once it starts to grow you can actually trim it and put it into water and it will grow even more right so I'm thinking could this be the perfect shrimp food we might not actually put it into the tanks as a, a plant for in the tanks because I've, I've seen some videos on YouTube where uh, people grow this and it can go quite out of control if you're not on top of it we'll see we'll see how it grows but I have a package here with some seeds I can see the seeds in here and uh, we'll plant this up and we'll see how good it is for a shrimp food because uh, if this works this would be awesome we'd have something readily available in a shrimp room and I, th I think maybe we still have to blanch it all the same but it would be so good if this works because you'd have it basically in your shrimp room all the time you wouldn't have to buy more shrimp food anymore so yeah we're going to give that a try today and the other thing guys is remember we did the walnut little package 18th of the 6th what is that maybe 3 or 4 weeks ago no it's 3 weeks ago for me it might be 4 weeks by the time you see this video it will be 4 weeks so I thought let me let me just pan this down a little bit 
let's pan this down a little bit. Don't look at the coffee, it's for me only. And let's open this together. Right, so if you're unfamiliar guys, about three or four weeks ago, I got a walnut and we made a little hole in it. I kind of made a mess of it. I kind of made a mess of it and yeah, the goal was to see if we could get this walnut to sprout so we could actually put it in some soil and grow our own walnut tree because if you guys didn't know, let me quickly show you walnut is actually one of my all time favourite all time favourite leaves for the shrimp room right, so I have a bag full of it here, you'll see it in all my cans the shrimp destroy it like no other leaf and so I want to grow a walnut tree in my garden and this was the plan so you make it, oh I think I can see something grown there oh I'm so excited, this is the first I've had a look at it guys I think I can see something grown in the middle so the plan guys was to pot this up right, and get it to grow into a decent height and put it in the garden I actually have a place for this already in my lawn as I've actually already made the hole and everything but because it's so late in the year I think we'll keep this in the house because I think that's probably going to be the hardest time for a walnut plant or any kind of small tree is the first year I can see green there what is that? let's just see oh oh there is growth there is growth there's a tiny bit mold look so I don't know how these look how it's stuck to it look let me show you like I'll get a little bit closer so yeah I broke this and I think that might be what this mold is I think this part here guys is the root yeah it's definitely the root so I'm going to try and peel this off really really carefully without breaking it even more oh yeah the roots are all in here let's try and break this off Break it? No. Let's try and. Oh, I did break a root there. Roots are so small. Let's try and get all of this off. Look at that. The roots went away inside it. You see it? Oh, there you go. So we lost one little bit of root. Two little bit of roots. So there you have it. You see? And I thought, what well, I think what we'll do right is I'll go and I'll get some soil and we'll plant this together. And this will begin the beginning of our walnut tree. The walnut trees in general can grow quite large. You're talking like seven to ten meters tall and very very wide. But you can actually uh, trim them down as well. You can keep them small by trimming them down. Right. So that's what we're going to do. We'll also plant up these watercress seeds at the same time right so let me go away I'll go and get some soil and stuff all right guys you know I was looking for a tub for our watercress I think we'll use the tub that actually came with our walnut right, so I have a, a decent sized pot here let me pan you down again Ooh. we have a decent sized pot here right and this is just a basic uh, compost mix it is has some sand in it I can see so it's well drained and I think what we'll do guys is we're actually just going to make a hole big enough for this and I'm going to put it in cover it up gently give it a water and we'll probably keep it in this this uh, little basin here you know this basin this will be it's like watering tray and we'll keep it somewhere in the shrimp room right and we'll grow this over the next year in here and we'll acclimate it to the outside in the fall next year once it's established itself in this pot a bit more okay so let's do that now the soil is so soft I'm going to try and put it down a little bit deeper than you would normally and I'm going to try and do it so we don't absolutely destroy that root system and normally I'd give this a little tap on the floor guys so that's what I'm going to do 
I'm going to give it a little tap on the floor. Soil's going everywhere. This just gets rid of the air gap in the middle. And while we're doing that, we're going to water these at the same time. Let's put our cress seeds into this. I don't want big giant lumps. I didn't. I didn't sieve this or nothing. Are you sure this is a shrimp cube channel, or is it <laughs> a garden channel? They kind of go hand in hand a little bit, don't they? So I'm just patting this down, just trying, just trying to make it a little bit flat because we're going to put our seeds on top. Let me just put it on there so you guys can see. I'm going to get myself a pair of scissors, my pink ones. This is from my daughter, she has like a tool kit she never uses, she told me to, to put it in with the rest of the tools. Now I'm just having a feel here before I open this. I want to make sure all the seeds are down the bottom and not stuck in these top bits before we cut it. And cut it over this just in case. Right, so we're not going to use too much I don't think. Let me quickly just check guys if there's any seeds in this actual there is, I think there actually is. They're very, very small seeds. Like not even one mil. There's one. One seed. In you go. One seed. Let's have a little look at our seeds in the pocket. Now the camera should be good enough to actually see inside here. Can you see? Is there any seeds? Now you can see. You can probably see better than I can, right? So I'm just going to put this over. And yeah, oh yeah, they're very small. They're more or less rolling out of our little container here. So isn't it bizarre, guys? Watercress, something that has been in my family before. My grandparents used to. Use. It's bizarre how a lot of these plants, that were I was going to say ancestors. <laughs> it's a lot left in here how our ancestors grew this and ate it and the modern generation has completely forgotten about them. Isn't it bizarre? Do they still exist out there and the modern generation has completely forgot about them? Let me see, we're going to put a little, just a little layer of earth on this. It's just to cover the seeds. Hopefully you guys can see something. Little layer like this. Yeah, uh, my vision is not the best for doing this, but you get the gist. And so this soil is meant for bigger plants outside, but it will do right. I'm just going to carefully pile it down, make sure the seeds are fully enclosed with the earth. And I'll probably spray this one guys, I'm going to spray it, just mist it a little bit and we'll close that lid. Right, and we still have a lot of earth here, might actually put some more of this on the top. I was going to put more on the top and then I saw this pot actually has a hole in the side there, right? so yeah, this is as much as this is going to be filled. Right, and I do have, I believe over here, we have some rainwater I'm going to use for this just in each one and we're going to close the lids and we'll put them somewhere that gets a decent amount of light let's do that alright guys I'm just going to put this under here now now you, you'd water this through normally but I'm just going to make sure we give it a little water like this I think this is actually RO water in this I use it for my Nepenthes and my other carnivorous plants and it is fine for this I just want to make sure you give it enough water in the centre so that all the earth collapses around it and it's snugly in right, and we'll do the same with our little seeds here water them exactly the same just a little bit I don't want to move the soil and whatever else I said about a sprayer, I couldn't find the spray bottle I have a feeling I left it outside here yeah, because I like to keep carnivorous plants as well. And these should germinate pretty fast I would imagine, within a couple of days. 
there's probably more than enough water in there, right? And we're going to put the lid on like this, and I'm going to put them up over there where I have a lot of light on my boiler. All right, guys, let's get our crest seeds put away. Just make sure they're all at the bottom. I like to use these plastic clips for stuff like this, and we're just going to fold it over like this. Like you're making a, a paper airplane type of thing. And I'll be able to use these seeds again if we need to. I'm hoping that the way we're doing it, that the we're actually able to propagate all of our stuff from the plants because with watercress it's very easy to actually just take cuttings. You can basically, guys, if you can do this, you can actually go to the store, especially if it's organic. I wouldn't recommend if it's not organic, but if you go to the store and you see watercress for sale or if it's in a salad mix or something like that, you can actually take the watercress out, put it in a bucket and it will grow as well. But so there's that other way of doing it. I just did it this way because I wanted to make sure there was no pesticides on it for us doing stuff. All right. Let's, uh, I'm going to clean this up a little bit here and then I'll get back to you more because we have a lot of stuff to go through down there. Alright shrimp, let's see a tiny bit further back because we're actually going to look through some stuff. When I buy my shrimp tanks, often I will get stuff with it, right? And sometimes the stuff is good, sometimes the uh, stuff you just want to throw away, right? So that last batch of stuff I got, I actually got quite a lot of these little ceramic caves for our little uh, bristle nose pleco. So I have bags of stuff and because I was cleaning out the garage, let me just point you to that video right now. Roll, Mark. Okay guys, let's go outside. I want to show you this tank. I've had to do this lot of hammer because, yeah, we need to get rid of this stuff here. We need to get rid of the tank of the garage, basically. And I want to show you because I did it, as I said, I did it off camera and uh, I did it because I had no choice really. We have to tidy up this place, had to tidy up this whole place here because we have, we have a new car coming on Monday, right? And we're getting all of this structure behind us. I don't know if you can make it out on camera here. This door and this door, we're getting made into one. So this is all coming off so you can understand that it's going to be quite a mess. I had to tidy all this up. New car's going to sit here. Uh, all these doors will be removed. So yeah, so I did the tank and I didn't do it on film because yeah, sometimes it's just very hard for me to do stuff and show you what I'm doing at the same time. But it turned out quite well. Resealed it completely. It's been in here for about three days. You can see the sealant here now. This tank isn't in good enough condition to have as any kind of show tank. Let me show you why from the side. Now this because it's quite badly scratched. I didn't actually notice this when I did it, when I bought it, how badly scratched it was. And the other thing, guys, was it was actually chipped in two places here. You can see one chip here. And it was chipped on this corner here. You can't actually see it at all. And I um, I didn't want the, the edge of the chip to actually cut my hand or be shown. So what I did was... The base is very thick on this, it's very very well silicon sealed, you see it here. Right, I did do the inside again, you can see it's all new on the inside. But I left the base seal on because um, I think it just added so much strength to the tank. And this is actually the base. This rim here is actually the base, so the, my way of fixing this issue with these chips was to silicon seal this base here, the silicon all the way along now this, putting the base on top and I don't know if this will be, you'll be able to see this in camera but here you can see it here and so any water that comes up here can't actually get out of the tank and yeah it doesn't look too bad I'll probably take off this brace here, this centre brace because this glass was quite thick Hey, but this wasn't, it was a, uh, this was the base, this used to be in the bottom, right, and I put it on the top, so we might actually cut this off here just for access. But, um, yeah, it's okay, it's going to be a grow-out tank, I think, for one of my colonies that you haven't yet seen. Let's go back to the shrimp room. 
So now that you've seen that I've cleaned up my garage, for obvious reasons, we need to make some new room because our garage is going to be redone. Um, I've actually had to bring in stuff out there that was there for God since we moved here basically like seven months ago. So I need to go through the stuff guys and I need to decide right but we have a keep bucket. Can you see that there? And we'll have a we'll have a chuck bucket. Keep bucket, chuck bucket. Okay. <laughs> Let me just turn you around a wee bit. See if you can see the chuck bucket. Can you see it? You can't really but you get the gist, you know that the chuck bucket is there, right? it's just there, right? Let's go through this, we'll see what works, what doesn't work, what um, stuff we're going to throw away and whatever else, right? So let's just start, right? When I get my stuff, we tend to get a lot of junk. This looks like a, some kind of light, There's some kind of charger on it. There's two lights, this one. A lot of hard watermarks in this, but they're both LED. Let's see, let's just see if, uh, if any of these two work. Because if there were decent lights, 8 watts, that's very low, but it's dual LED um, daylight. Let's see if this works. Let's see, do I have a plug? Do we have a plug? Alright. Does it work? Hmm, it's not good. Let's see if the other one works because it, it looks like it has the same fitting. Oh, it works. That's fairly bright actually. I don't know what this is from. That's a very bright light. This will keep this. That goes into the keep bin up here. And yeah, I don't think this light works so We'll put this into the chuck bin. Guys, we have tons of stuff here to go through. So there's my <laughs> soldering iron. We've got some... Oh, this one is very heavy, this bag. Alright, so here's a lesson, guys. Whenever you get wood like this, this is obviously been in a fish tank or something. You can see all the duckweed and stuff on it. Yeah, bleach it. Right, so you put this into a bucket, fill it up to like a couple of gallons of water and put one or two uh, teaspoons of bleach into the water and just leave it overnight and then rinse it and dechlorinate it the next day. De dechlorinate, dechlorinate it for a little while and then chuck all the water, rinse it again and then you can use it in your tank. Because I've spoken to loads of people about the same thing where we get wood and, by god that sounded so bad, you get, <laughs> you get wood and you end up getting parasites from it because you haven't sterilised it properly. Right, so wood is a really easy way to, to transfer, say, stuff like planaria and hydra and whatever else from one tank to the next. And yeah, so sterilise your stuff. But we'll keep that wood. We'll have to sterilise it. Another tiny bit of wood. Looks like it's well worn. We'll keep that as well. Oh, that's a nice bit of spider wood. I'm trying to see, is this one bit or two bits? I think it's one bit. It's a nice bit of spider, but I'm not really into aquascaping as such. But it's a nice piece, isn't it? Keep pile. This looks like some kind of cave, fake cave. We keep for the, this plico tank at the back. Well, guys, we'll actually use this bucket that came in as well. So this is going to be our also keep bucket because there's quite a lot of stuff here. All right, what is this? We have some kind of rock here. Now this kind of looks like coral, but it could also be something that's come from fresh water that they use for cichlids and whatever else. It looks like it's had cyano or something at one time on it. You see it? All this green stuff. So we're going to put this into a bucket over here and this will be sterilised with our wood at the same time. Another bit, exactly the same. And I'll put these bits of rock into my Opu Uli tank. That's good. Now what is this little thing? Zulux stick, stick something. I think it is an actual pump. 
Yeah, it's a pump. Pumka. Can someone translate that? Let's see if it actually works. I don't really have a use for something this small, but I can't really hear anything. Let's, uh, guys, can you see the tank at the back? It's an Eheim e little thingamajig. It looks to be pretty blocked, actually. Yeah, that is really low. Really, really low. Hmm, I'm not sure I have a use for this. I'll keep it and we'll see if we can make it work better than it is. Alright, so I typically don't have heaters. It's funny with this one, look. This looks like uh, Nerex snail eggs all over, you see it? It's a little jewel here, it looks like a 50 watt heater. 50 there. So yeah, I don't typically use heaters, but remember guys, we talked about using a heater in this tank, so yeah, we can maybe use this. Just to increase the temperature a little bit because we have fish in there too. There's a keeper. I'm not sure what this is, this thing. I never understand plastic plants, what, what is the fascination with them, with some people. So this is one to go in the bin. Little fish net. It, is, it doesn't look like it's baby shrimp safe, the holes are too big. But we have little bristle nose and stuff so we can keep it for this. Uh, looks like a feeding ring which I probably won't use into the bin. Let's see what else do we have here. Oh, another little breeding cave which we'll keep. Another little bit of wood. We're getting to the end of the first bag. Another breeding cave. Which is awesome. Uh, again, plastic plant, not a fan of it, so into the bin to be recycled. This is interesting. What is this? Is This is like an auto feeder. Look at it. Hmm. Now, I do have a goldfish, and I wonder if this would be useful for it. Let's see, is that a battery compartment? It is. Yeah, it may be useful for, for them. I don't think it's actually... Is it on? It is. It still works. Hmm. Yeah, we'll, we'll see if we can set this up on the goldfish thing. The keeper. Getting to the end. A little tiny cave. By the way guys, our caves and stuff, we probably should uh, sterilise them too. I'm going to make a habit of just sterilising them. I'm going to make a habit of just sterilising everything. So there's little bits of plastic and whatever else in here too. I don't think any of this is any use for us. So it will be going to the recycling. That's bag one. Let's start on bag two. Yeah, I told you I had a lot of stuff. Guys, I buy a lot of used, used tanks. Lampard, uh, Lampard DR. This looks like the... It looks almost like the connector for our other... Like this one. I wonder if the, I wonder if that was the wrong one that we had before on here, and this one might work. So the tanks that this stuff came from were Jewel, Jewel manufacturer. So I'd imagine the lights are okay. Hmm. Uh, it is okay. It's nothing to write home about. It's not as powerful as the other little one. But, um, yeah, it's okay, we could use this for something. We could use it for something. So it's it's going from the throw pile to the keep pile. Alright, what do we have here now? More junk. This looks like loads of filters. Little feeding ring, junk. Dual internal filter, this looks like. It's ones that, with the big... Uh, holes and stuff. Yeah, this looks like a recycling job. What is this one? So this looks like the top of some kind of filter. Like the power head would go here. And the sponge maybe go here. This looks like a, it could be it's maybe an aqua oil type filter. 
I'll put this to the side as a possible keep until we can actually find the actual pump. All right, so this is the, the, the remaining parts of the filter that we just decided we're going to recycle. Now this is, Hoover actually had this time before me actually, this stuff before me actually labeled everything. So that's recycling. I'm not sure what this is for, just some kind of plastic box. Maybe we're going to use that for something. God, guys, I kid you not, I kid you not. The amount of these filters that I've had over the years from buying used tanks, it must be into the like 20s or 30 tanks like that. So this wiring is all connected to each other. Look, whoever this was clearly gave up the hobby in a rush because everything's just thrown together. Yehang, pick up one cartridge. Now look at the wiring here. Let me put this in the ground until I manage to actually do something with it. All right, another little Yehang filter. Yeah, all the cable. And they, I have a feeling that something went wrong with their tank and they just threw everything. It's bizarre. Look, it looks like uh, narrow eggs in the little gaps here. Or it could this could be assassin snail eggs actually as well. Hmm, will I keep this? It's probably usable. I can see all the suckers are gone. Decisions, decisions. I don't really have a use for it in the shrimp room, so recycle. Looks like some kind of spray bar filter. I don't know what this is from. Recycle. God. Yeah, I don't know where to start with this. There's a heater here. Let me see. What is this stuff? It's like the, the thing that you use for tidying your cables. It's just a mess though. I'll try to do this without damaging the cables because some of this stuff might be useful. Whatever it is. God, it's so long. What is this thing? Hmm. I don't know what this is. This looks like some kind of chis chisoro maybe? It looks like there's loads of them all connected to the one thing. God damn it, this thing is long. Alright, I'll probably use this for something. It's like maybe a metre and a half long cable tidy. Let me see. We did see another heater here. Hmm. Oh, this is an Aqua L one. This is 75 watts, so this is better suited to this. I'm just checking the bottom to see that it's not broken. Uh, typically I don't use heaters in my shrimp room, but we're going to try it in this tank over here because the, I have a feeling that the bristlenose plecos are not particularly fond of the colder temperatures in my shrimp room. So that's a keeper. Yeah, let's see, what is this? Who makes this? Ansloot? Ansloot, I don't know. I don't know what this is, guys, this next thing. It doesn't seem to be made in China, Foshang, ADA lighting. ADA lighting, it just looks like a mess. I don't know if these are Chizuru or Oh, you know what these are, actually? These are actually lights. I thought these were the Chizoro discs. You know, when you put them like this. I think these are actually lights. Let's just uh, see if we can untangle it enough where we can plug it in and see if they actually work. Because if they're ADA lights, they probably have decent LEDs. You know? Through this absolute horrible tangled mess. Yeah, I don't know what happened to the people. They obviously just said F it and threw all their stuff into a bucket. That normally happens when you have an accident. This might have actually come from the tank that I had to reseal, actually. The bigger tank. Right, so there's one. Yeah, I think these are LEDs. You can probably just see it. They're in pretty rubbish nick, but they might clean up. 
You see them? Let's say, guys, let's say actually plug it in and see if they actually do anything. Such a mess. Look at the cabling. Oh, let me see. Do they work? Oh, that is not a good sign. They are very, very yellow as well. Yeah, these are going in the bin. Yeah, that one, they, these look like they might have fallen into the tank. Going to the bin. I have no use for this, although this one looks to be uh, complete. This one, we might keep this for the goldfish thing. Because I have a big goldfish tank that you haven't seen. <laughs> yeah, we might keep that, it looks like a decent filter. Alright, come on, more rubbish, Mark. More rubbish. There is the bottom of a power head. We'll keep that. That may be from the ADA one. Oh, what is this? Lovely little fella. Eheim Air 100. Yes, I'm, I'm okay keeping stuff like this as long as it works. Things like this can be good backup. Let's plug it in and see if it works. Yeah, it clearly works. Let's, uh, there's a big length of tubing with this. Let's actually put it into a tank and see if it actually blows. Yes, if it's, if it's working, it's, the diaphragm is cooked. I think. Eh, it's not bad. That would maybe do one tank. <laughs> Let me see. Yeah, that would maybe do one time. Hmm. Airline is good. Yeah, we can keep this. Yeah, this may, may do for a tank that can't be connected to my air system somehow. There's a lot, a lot of actual airline with this one. So I think we're almost done. Let's put you in there. I want to see what else there is. I would have been hopeful that there was a, a body to the power head, but it doesn't seem to be right. Air stones, bin. This, I'm not sure what this is. It kind of looks like a... I don't know, it kind of looks like some kind of glass cleaning contraption. I can't tell. Bin. This might be the base of whatever this is. Because it looks like it's the same shape, see it? This shape. Hmm. Alright, we're getting there. Bin, PVC pipe. The light off the top of the tank, the, the lid. Uh, three way adapter, bin. Looks like an old air stone. Bin. Yeah, I, I don't typically use air stones, they kind of block up far too easy. I'm not sure what this is, this thing. Bin, recycling. We're down to the dregs of the tank now. Yeah, that, that, that one that we looked at there, this, this thing. It definitely looks like the base of a Aquel filter because I recognise this holder from the Aquel filters. But I can't see any... I can't see any pump with it so far. It might have broken. Right, so I think that is it. Anything else worth showing you guys? Big air stones. No, that is it. Alright, so that was our bags tidied up, so we've got recycling. I'll put these boxes through in my storage next door, and we'll get on with the rest of the video. Hello guys, welcome back. It is the next day. Again, my camera battery conked out and I didn't see it. I need to figure out a way how to do this so I know when the battery is going out, like, a, like an audio thing or maybe I can power it with a USB something. I don't know, but I need to change something because that's twice in a row that I've done this where I've, I've still been talking like I'm talking to you guys and the camera's not even on. Anywho, right, so what I did yesterday was Basically this whole rack here, water changes, filled them back up, cleaned them, and I fed the tanks. I thought the camera was on, but 
Yeah, it wasn't. So, I, so maybe something I should do as well is I should maybe pay more attention to you, right? So when I'm looking at you guys here, you think I'm looking at the lens, right? When I'm looking like this, I'm actually looking at myself and seeing what the camera is focusing on. So, yeah, if you see me looking back and forward like this, that is what I'm doing, right? So, so guys, let's do a feeding. Um, I'm probably going to take some macro footage as well because I think this is a good way to see our baby development if we're doing feeding at the same time. We always do a feeding on a Saturday, it's actually Sunday for me but it is what it is. Uh, so let's uh, fill the tanks with some food and we'll see how we get on. Right, so the food today is going to be this stuff here, this is called dead shrimp food. I got this from, I want to say, who was it now? It wasn't, I don't know if it was Leon or yeah, it was Leon, Shrimp Minage, he gave me this stuff here, right? And it is a decent food, so we're going to put this into the tanks today. And we're going to record them as we go along as well, right? So, let's get started. Right, guys, I'm actually going to do my tank top-ups at exactly the same time, right? So you'll see me doing that as well. So basically, this is connected to my RO unit, all this stuff here. Big cable goes all the way around the room. And, yeah, we are attached these to the tanks like this. Right, and guys, while we're talking about water there, I thought this was quite interesting, right? I noticed up in the corner, away up there in the corner, that I do have a little bit of mould in this room. And it's exactly behind where the metal is. Let me show you. Alright guys, it doesn't really look like much, does it? It doesn't look like much at all. Let me see, I'll, I'll try and hold the camera steady and zoom in a little bit and you'll see what I mean. But it is exactly behind where this pillar is there so if I go down under here yeah it is in the same place right in the corner behind the pillar right so I'm thinking that this is on the outside wall here because I don't see anywhere else and it's only behind this pillar so I'm thinking yeah so I'm thinking that maybe there just isn't enough air movement in here is once I start to think about this I realised that yeah, there, there is virtually no air movement in here, so if there's any humidity in there, which there will be in my shrimp room, if there is a cold spot, like for example on the vents and the walls on here on this side, they typically will get a lot of moisture being attracted and attached to them because they're connected to the outside, it's a little bit colder, that surface. Right, so I was thinking um, it's inadequate airflow in here. I do have the windows open sometimes, but today again it's a little bit colder, so there's no point me wasting heat, letting it all go out the window when I should be heating my tanks. So I'm thinking, guys, right, I already have a dehumidifier through there. I'm thinking my solution will be get another dehumidifier, which I probably should do for the shrimp room as it is, and have a fan on here permanently just to circulate the air a little bit more. Because I, th I think that's probably one of the issues why you get mould in the corner like this. So we've been here for a good, what, eight months. And this is the first sign that I've seen of any mould in this room. And typically the humidity in here will be about 45% humidity, something like that. And I have to bear in mind as well, none of my tanks are covered. I don't typically like them covered, but we'll see uh, going into this winter if I do have to cover them because... Yeah, once the outside surfaces get very, very cold, there's not much I can do to stop the air, uh, the water um, evaporating and going across the room to all the cold spots and just creating an issue. So we might have to cover these, but I think I'll, in the meantime, I'll add a fan. There's a fan behind you that I put over there. And um, it will be on here. When it's uh, warmer in here, I'll keep the windows open and stuff. And yeah, that's what we'll do. We just have to keep an eye on that because that's one thing I don't want building up in this house is mould from the shrimp room. I think just getting another dehumidifier in here probably will help and adding a couple of fans and, and strategic points in the room will probably help a lot. Alright, enough blathering about that but I thought I'd mention that because some of you guys that have basement uh, fish rooms and shrimp rooms will run into the same problems as I do so it's worth talking about. Okay, let's get on with feeding the shrimp. Alright guys, you can see pretty much half of this rack. Let's say I just grab some food. And we're going to use our little force feeding pipe here. Oh, pardon me. And we're just going to put it into some of the tanks. And yeah, I'll, uh, I'll do this guys. And then we'll come back and we'll see what's actually in here. Because I think this part is probably the most boring part of the video for you guys. 
Maybe it's not me talking. God, there's so many baby shrimp in this tank. You'll see that in a minute. That's, uh, this one's empty. This one's empty. This one's got shrimp in it. Right, so I'll put food in all these tanks and we'll come back in like 10 minutes if you can see me. And we'll show you the baby shrimp hopefully coming to the front. It's a good way to record them. Let's do that. Alright shrimpless, that is the food in the tanks. These shrimp are absolutely ravenous. Right? So I was playing with feeding them every like uh, twice a week, but I think I'm going to stick to once a week because I, I, I think this is a much better way of doing it just once a week. And while I was contemplating that, right, while I was actually putting these extra pipes on to uh, fill up for evaporation, because that's what these do, um, you know, I was made aware of this humming noise in here. Listen. Off. On. You hear it? Right, so I think it's that pump up there. And it's not set up in the optimal way, it's the complete wrong way guys, it's where you have the pump and then you have a manifold and then you have uh, bits of piping coming off it going to each tank, bits of silicon piping, right? It's not the optimal way to do it because, yeah, you run into issues with overheating, then when I put my hand in that pump, yeah, it is overheating, so it's not something I can fix today, but it is something that is going to be fixed probably by next week because we have actually bought another pump for the room, right? I, I haven't actually ever shown this in camera, but I have uh, three pumps in this room and they're all kind of hooked up really jank jankily, jankily, right? Like actually uh, two pumps going into the same system. You, you just get the drift guys where it will, they will be fighting against each other and whatever else. So you're probably always better just getting the right size of pump for your room in the first place. So I'm, I'm getting a bigger pump. We might actually have to um, this one's quite big, it's uh, 120 litres a minute which is loads, it's way more than I need for the room but I'd rather have way more than uh, what I uh, need and what we'll have to do with that guys is I have a feeling that I want to put this thing on the ground because the pump itself weighs 10 kilos right so it's quite a big pump right and I think they're actually called Mido, Mido 120s, Mido Nikoi is the new name, maybe in Europe Nikoi something. I think Mido might have been the old name. But um, instead of having it up there, we might actually put it on the ground, on the floor, down here somewhere. And we'll get up some of the, um, what's it called, reinforced PVC flexible pipe. You know the stuff that's got the strands through it? Because I want, I want to get something that can't kink on itself. You know, you know the stuff I mean that's like PVC and you've got strands white strands going through and it's like almost impossible to kink so maybe put that on the floor have it going up to the existing fitting on the roof with this PVC pipe and maybe just use a couple of uh, stainless steel clamps to clamp it all together and oh, fingers crossed guys it's just easy to do because uh, I hate it when stuff breaks in my shrimp room and then all the other pumps that we have in here they can just go under the shrimp rack under there for storage for I don't know backups I think because this is not an optimal way to do it. 120 litres is more than enough for the shrimp room, more than enough. Right? And typically guys, I would like to have at least one litre a minute per filter. And in here I have probably 50, 60 filters, so we have more than enough here. Let's say uh, break out the macro camera here and we'll go and have a look at the shrimp because yeah, they're going nuts for the food already. Alright guys, we're going to use the same setup as we did the last time for me showing you the stuff in the tanks. The audio will be on this camera because I have it linked up to my shirt here. I can't connect this to the macro camera so this is going to be on. This will be the background footage and the macro camera footage will be overlaid on top. Right, so let's start with our tanks. Macro camera, Olympus Tough TG4. I actually bought the new one guys, Olympus Tough TG7 and it was absolutely Hotch, I can't say the word, but it was absolutely garbage. It was so bad, guys, that it couldn't focus on the shrimp at all. No matter what I did, it would not focus on the shrimp, and it was noticeably worse than their old camera for doing basic stuff. So, yeah, I sent it back and got a refund. Um, yeah, let's start over here. Let's have a little look. Put you on macro mode. Oh, we have lots of baby shrimp. 
Now we have a lot of baby shrimp over here, right? So I'm going to focus on the baby shrimp first, not the actual food. Just to give you an idea of what's actually happening in the tank. Ah, guys, is that even in focus? I can't tell. I can't tell where we have... It's not in focus. Wait a minute. Let me try that again. Yeah, you know what it is? It's sometimes I just can't tell with my eyes if something is actually in focus or not. Let's pan along here. You see the baby shrimp? So these ones, when they get a little bit bigger, up to like maybe one centimetre, these baby shrimp, there's actually a lot of ones in here, like the one dead centre of the camera right now, are stuff that should be moved on to the grow tank. Right, let's go over there and we'll have a look in the actual feeding bowl. You see what I mean when I said the ravenous? That red one is super gorgeous. We've actually set up another tank for red ones which you'll also see in this video. So these are my fancy red crystals. Red tight, oh my god, I, you know I always get the name mixed up with these. Fancy crystal reds, let's just leave it at that. Another red, look at that one, that one's gorgeous. It can go in the other tank too. But let's just go in order, so this one's empty, this one's empty. This is the one I look in and I just see baby shrimp everywhere. When I say I see baby shrimp everywhere, I mean like on the plants and stuff. And, you know, just like tiny, tiny little things. You could probably just make a... You see them? And they're on everything in this, in this tank, on every surface. So that is a very, very good setup, I think. Alright, the next tank is my... It's just basically another crystal red shrimp tank. These ones are very nice. There's no babies in this one yet. I do see some buried girls. Oh, I did see. I'm having to manually focus by moving the camera in and out, but you can see a nice buried girl there. Yeah, I don't see any young in this tank at all. But it's not to say there won't be. Okay. Let's go over here. And so this is the grow-out tank. This is getting to the point where I should really actually start to decide what we're going to move out here because, yeah, these are adults, almost. And they're freaking gorgeous, guys. They are freaking gorgeous. A lot of these could easily be going back up to the breeder tank. Some of them definitely can go down to, into the cold tank. As a general rule, though, I would put anything that I see in here, like that one dead center, I would put any female back up into the top tank, and all the good males, and just remove all the bad males to the cold tank below. You know, and keep it going that way. And eventually, if I wanted to, I could sell some. This so next tank is another crystal tank. This one always has babies. Always has babies. Let's have a look in the gravel. God, the focus is horrific with this thing to do. I noticed with the macro camera that there really isn't any automatic focus when I'm trying to film these guys, so it's, I'm always having to adjust it manually myself. The good old fashioned way. Right, so the soil on that last one was Akadama. These are the Goldens. I'm just patiently waiting on these guys having their first batch of babies in this tank because this was a Groot tank. It was a Groot tank from the Crystals, right? So these are young from Crystals. But they are Golden Bees. I love the berry girl there, you see her? So I'm patiently waiting, guys. It's, a, it's just a matter of sitting on your hands and looking at the plants and eventually you'll start to see babies, right? So it's not happened yet. But it will happen soon enough. Look at the girls and stuff in here. It will happen soon enough. And that's why I like to record this every week because then it gives you an idea of how the tanks are actually progressing. Oh, 
All right, these guys are doing good. Let me just straighten my body up a little bit. I'll try and get this in best focus as I can. Look at these uh, fish ponds. They are awesome. They're gorgeous. Uh, that is a, definitely a baby there, you see it? That might have been one of the ones when uh, we added the shrimp to the tank. Remember there was like six or seven babies or something? All these little tiny ones. So these are probably those ones. I can't actually see any baby shrimp from us yet, but it's very early. It's very, very early for us to get babies. I do apologise if the camera's slightly going in and out of focus. I just, I'm struggling with my vision to see what I'm looking at here, guys. Gorgeous, though. All right, so these are Raymond's happy shrimp. His own kind of... Uh, line and guys they're they are very unique aren't they they have a very distinct pattern on the faces can i zoom in god the zoom in on this is so bad they have a very very distinct pattern on their faces a little bit zigzaggy you see it isn't that cool it's awesome thank you raymond for all these shrimp by the way that you sent me in case you're watching let's jump over to our Super Crystal Reds, and I do apologise guys, I am quite aware that I say the wrong words for things quite a lot of my videos. And I'm going to pan down a little bit here because I thought I saw a different type of shrimp in here. What are you? What is this guy? You see that one there? I think it is just a Super Crystal Red, but it is very dark. It's almost, it's almost like a, a Ruby Red. I won't be my finger getting in the way there. You see it? Like a red King Kong. It's almost like it, but it's not quite. It's very, very dark, you see it? All right, let's uh, jump up. I'm going to do these two tanks and then the bottom rack here. And yeah, they, they've taken the food. They've taken the food and bolted. So I'll try and get some, I'll change the, the mode of the camera and zoom out a little bit so you can actually just see the tank. These guys have taken the food out of the bowl. Somewhere in here, they've taken it probably at the back or something, maybe under one of the leaves. I can't see. But again, these are shrimp I got from Raymond. Happy space. Thank you very much for them, Raymond. going to turn off these valves while we're here so that they don't overfill. All right guys this is, let me change the mode again, oh. Super Crystal Reds and this is a lovely berry shrimp here, let's see can we zoom in a little bit on it? Lovely ber berry shrimp. Now these shrimp have been in here for a good while, a good few months, and I've yet to see a baby shrimp in here. And I can't quite figure out why they're not breeding like the other tank, because I've checked everything in here completely. I've checked uh, ammonia, nitrites, ammonium, nitrates, pH, GH, KH, everything that you can imagine guys that you can possibly test for or tested for. The tank is cycled, the plants are doing really, really well. But we have no baby shrimp at all. None. None that I can see. And they're on the same feeding schedule as other ones that get fed once a week. Is it a matter of time? Or is it something else? And it's unusual that we're not seeing any baby shrimp at all in this tank. The soil is ADA Amazonia uh, V1. But there is... No ammonia at all, there's no ammonium reading. If I, if I checked it right now, you, would, you wouldn't get a reading on it. So the tank is well and truly cycled. It's just one of those ones that are a bit of a mystery, right? And when it's like this and you know things are not wrong, I'm hesitant to jump into the tank and change things, guys. I mean, they have leaves. You see? 
But there's just a lack of actual breeding in baby shrimp. So our uh, conductivity in this tank is up over 300. I can't see where I'm going wrong with this tank at all. So I plan just to sit on my hands and wait and hope for more baby shrimp. I know that's not what we always do on this channel. We never hit them. Let's do this tank first and then we'll do the butt ones over here. We normally don't wait like that, but yeah, let's see, zoom it. These guys are doing good. Baby's starting to show as a, uh, over here, the little baby. Like ones like this, I can tell are, are ones that have been in the tank and grown in the tank. Another baby over here. This camera does focus when I'm recording, uh, when it wants to. So I'm not sure how I should set this camera up better, but let's uh, look at something as an example. We're going to look at this leaf here. Does it, will it go into focus? It did eventually, see it? It did eventually, so... Maybe it's just a setting that I need to change on here because sometimes it will just stay out of focus like here. This, this is in macro mode but it's just not focusing at all. Now I wish that I could see one of the red babies in here because there's red babies in here. And I wanted to see them on camera because I've actually never seen them up close and personal. Yeah, oh, it's coming to the front actually. See, see what I mean with the focus? If I look at the shrimp will eventually focus. I don't know if it's something to do with the angle of the glass and what, because that, yeah, that looks like a perfect picture, you see it? Like this. As soon as I try to go to more angles and stuff, I think it's to do with the refraction of the light and whatever else. Where did that shrimp go, the red one that was there? It was coming to the front and then it disappeared again. Hmm, interesting. Right, let's go over and check over our blue boat tank. I right, will do these first. These are the fancy crystal reds as well. Remember I showed you the fancy crystal blacks first up on the shelf. This is ones that we've taken from it and this is going to be the start of our new colony. Right? So there's a couple of baby shrimp in that one up there that can also go into this tank. But these are doing great so far. Feeding once a week, they're all coming to the food. Awesome. Alright shrimplets, so it looks like the whole family has come for dinner time here and yeah they're looking good, I can see the odd baby shrimp which is a good bonus, bonus sign, these look very very blue as well which I like, I think it means that they are super healthy, another baby shrimp here, so this one is starting to take off I think, I actually did see more baby shrimp in here the other day but yeah, look at this mass of plants, good luck spotting baby shrimp in there. That's all I'm saying. I did actually see tear top ones over here yesterday. There's actually one on this uh, leaf. You can just see its head sticking it. It's going to go back under the leaf. You see it? Now let's look at let's look at the cold tank because I do believe that these guys have also had babies. I've been spotting quite a few of them in here recently, right? So let's look at the shrimp first. Yeah, these guys are really starting to take off. They're really starting to take off. It's almost at that point where we can call it a horde. Horde, I said. Horde. Right, and it would be nice if I could show you some of the babies because they are in here. I've seen quite a few of them already. Guys, let me just pause it here for a second and I'll find some bambinos. And we'll see if we can actually spot some of the babies for you because yeah, I, when I looked in here the other day yeah, I can see some in the leaves there but they're so far back macro camera is not going to pick that up you see on the, oh they're on the filters actually right I'm going to try and change the mode of my camera to scene mode and we'll try and focus on one of the filters so it's just to show you that they are actually starting to have babies in here. Let's zoom in. It's probably a horrifically bad picture. But it's to give you an idea that the breeding has started. Okay. 
All right, guys, so there you have it. There is our weekly video. Hope you enjoyed it, right? Because uh, I have enjoyed making this one for a change. I know I said the other day I really don't like making videos that much, but I enjoy it when I see lots of baby shrimp. I enjoy it. That's what it is. That noise up there is doing my head, and I can't wait to fix that. We'll do that on camera as well. We'll fix that. But isn't this awesome when you start to see lots and lots of shrimp breeding like the clappers, as we say here in the shrimp room? Because that's why you're here, isn't it? To see me breeding these lovely, lovely shrimp. And of course, drinking. Mm. Tons and tons of coffee. <coughs> Guys, if you agree, right, would you please do me a big favour and smash that like button? I don't think I've said it in the entire video, and I want to see if the button lights up. Tell me in the comments if you see that it does. Oh, and by the way as well, please uh, check out this next video here, because it will be something that YouTube recommends to you to watch from more. See you in the next one. Happy shrimp game, guys.